I'm an RV tech and I've decided to go undercover to tell you which RVs are quality and which are overpriced lemons. We're gonna be reviewing the Keystone Springdale that's right at 30 feet long and its average retail is just under $39,000. So if you're new to my channel, you may not know that I have both a free shopping course and a paid version that includes my master database of all the RVs I've graded and the grading app that I'm going to be using today to grade these RVs. Now this RV I've actually reviewed before and the reason I'm reviewing it again is that I made some slight changes to the scoring system. So after you put in the information about the year, make, and model, the first question in the app is what type of water heater is in the RV? They have a suburban brand tank type water heater. I'll give them a 10 out of 10 rating. So the next question in my app is going to be about refrigerators. We have a 12 volt refrigerator made by Everchill. There's two reasons that I don't like Everchill refrigerators. The first is it seems to be a pretty high failure rate with them. And the second is you can't get replacement parts for them. I've tried. The company just doesn't sell any replacement parts, which means if it's going out and it's not under warranty, you're buying a whole new refrigerator. Next, let's talk about the air conditioners. This is a GE air conditioner. In my experience, they seem to have a high failure rate. I've had two clients that it had GE air conditioners on their RVs. One of them had to have it replaced within the first year under warranty because it had simply lost all its Freon. I put the replacement on there and a year later that one went bad as well. Lost all of its Freon. That's a pretty high failure rate in my opinion and it doesn't make me think great things about GE air conditioners. So in this RV, the biggest change from the original video is going to be how I score the cabinets and countertops. The quality of the cabinets and countertops is going to have a big impact on your RVing experience. In the old scoring system, I gave counters and cabinets 10 points total across both those categories. I realized when it came to an RV like this, the really cheap materials they used didn't affect the overall score of the RV as much as I thought it should. The countertops are what is called thermofoil. What that means is that they take some sort of board and they put a plastic wrap over top with a pretty pattern that looks like granite or something. The reason I don't really like thermofoil countertops is that if you cut it, water can get through the cut and make usually the particle board they put underneath swell and come apart. Another reason is that if you set something hot on there, like I've seen this in campers numerous times, someone's cooking with a pot, they take it off the stove, they set it on the countertop, it just melts a hole in the top of the countertop. There's nothing you can do about it except replace the whole countertop. It is super cheap crap. Can I say crap? I can say crap. It's easy to mess them up, let's put it that way. The next category we're gonna talk about is cabinets. For the Springdale, the doors are just painted MDF. So what is MDF? MDF is medium density fiberboard. It's essentially super thick cardboard. Who wants painted cardboard cabinets? <laughs> I really hate MDF because it's almost impossible to keep it perfectly dry in a kitchen, especially if you have kids around, like, oh my gosh, things get spilled. When water comes in contact with MDF, it swells up. The face frames are a vinyl wrapped lumber core, which is slightly higher quality. One of the big comments I got in my original video is how do I tell what the quality of the counters and cabinets actually are? My RV shopping course will teach you how to assess RV systems, including slide outs, plumbing, appliances, cabinets and countertops, frames, roofs, manufacturing defects, and much more. For the frames and roofing, I don't have any real complaints with what they selected. The roofing is all a TPO membrane, which is very durable in my opinion. So the next category I grade on is slide outs. Springdale, I give a 10 out of 10. It has a pretty standard through frame slide out where the arms are underneath the slides. These are very reliable systems that I don't have to work on much. Plumbing is probably one of the most important aspects of your RV. Because as we've talked about a little bit, a lot of components are just made out of cardboard. The RV industry has this bad habit of doing plumbing that doesn't meet code anywhere. And the reason it doesn't meet code is it leaks. Short story is, if you have flexible tubing, it should never be connected to this type of fitting. I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video explaining this plumbing problem in detail. On the Springdale, they did it correct. Anywhere that there is a faucet connected to PEX tubing, they have the proper type of fitting to transition. Finally, let's talk about fit and finish. On the Springdale, we had this issue where the door just wouldn't close, which is annoying. You kind of want your bathroom door to latch. It's like something that could be fixed, but it's not something you want to see on a brand new trailer. 
trailer. So for fit and finish, I gave it an eight out of 10. Let's look at total points. The survey got a 76, which is a C grade trailer in my scale. Generally in my experience reviewing RVs, the more budget friendly RVs tend to have lower quality cabinets, countertops. And what they don't give you a discount on is when they put in bad plumbing or a bad slide out system, it's gonna cause you a real headache down the road. Would I buy a Springdale? Maybe. Would I buy this Springdale? Look what I found on the outside. When I walked up to the front of the camper, I saw that the siding was split open and I knew it had been raining that night, which meant water was pouring in behind the siding, going God knows where in this trailer, leaving lots of water damage. Folks, if you want to get a quality RV, you have to check it for manufacturing defects. I have a checklist that'll tell you what to check. It's called my Don't Buy a Lemon Guide. This guide is included in both my free and my paid RV shoppers course. So go and get it, knowledge is power. Click here for a video on how to spot bad plumbing in an RV. Click here for a list of all the travel trailers that I've reviewed. And click here if you wanna see all my RV reviews.